This is a cat. And this is a rendition of Lucia Zarate standing next to a cat. Lucia was a Mexican circus performer who toured with Barnum and Bailey until 1890, until the train she was riding on got stuck going up a mountain in a ferocious blizzard and she died of exposure. By age 12, she had already completed puberty, quite precociously, as is common in girls with MOPD. They can have breast development by seven and monarchy by age nine. She was 20 inches tall and weighed five pounds. To put that in perspective for you, the average newborn weighs seven pounds and is 20 inches long. Wowzers, right? I know. So MOPD is considered a pretty rare disease, but it might be less rare than once thought, mostly because of improvements in neonatal care and a subsequent increase in survival. Yay! But still, there are fewer than 100 cases between the US of A and our maple syrup cousins up north. That's an incidence of one in three million. MOPD fetuses show severe intrauterine growth retardation. However, as long as they're still floating around inside their moms, the absolute value of their head measurements are small for their gestational age, but their head is normocephalic in relation to the rest of their tiny little bodies. It's not until after the baby is spat forth from the depths of its mother's womb that true microcephaly is present and caused by the premature closure of the fontanelles, also known as... That's right, craniosynostosis. Feel a little like Dora the Explorer right now. On delay. Patients with MOPD have very characteristic facial features. In fact, I just came home from Target and narrowly avoided a really awkward situation. I have MOPD on the brain right now, so I'm walking out of Target and I see a lovely couple and when you see a baby, you just have to look at the baby because he's so small and nice. So I'm walking in the parking lot, look over there and smile at them. And then I glance at the baby and I do a double take like that. And I swear to God, for like two seconds, I was staring at this baby. I'm sure with a shocked look on my face, Two seconds is a long time when you're giving somebody's baby the stink eye right in front of them. This baby's face looks just like this picture, except for in a baby form. The point is, they have very characteristic facial features, such as they have a prominent nose with small nostrils, an elevated nasal root, and a wide bridge. They have shallow orbits with large palpable fissures, but as they get older, the fissures start to slant downward and make the eyes look almost slit-like. Also, the eyeball does not continue to grow as the child grows, which leads to farsightedness, and then they have to be measured for custom eyewear. Their ears are just plastic and low-set with absent lobules. Most of them have recurrent otitis media early in life, and many of them develop neuroconductive hearing loss, which requires a hearing aid. Severe respiratory complications are pretty common in infancy, and most of them have to be intubated and ventilated at some point. Instances of subglottic tracheal stenosis have been reported, and those cases require the placement of a permanent tracheostomy. Recurrent respiratory infections are common. Fortunately, most of them tend to grow out of respiratory problems as they get older. Hello everyone, I am an MOPD2 baby. I have a lot of feeding difficulties, okay? Let me tell you, I have to be fed the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest portions you have ever seen several times throughout the day. Oh yeah, baby? Well, you're not alone. That's pretty common. And in severe cases, a nasogastric tube might have to be placed. The IQ range is about 50 to 90, although some do have normal intelligence. It's thought that this might correlate with familial IQ, or it could indicate a deficiency caused by malnourishment, which was caused by the feeding abnormalities. One of the major complications is the risk for cerebrovascular accidents. About 20% of patients develop something called moya moya, which literally means puff of smoke in Japanese. And it's how we describe the appearance of the dilated, overgrown vessels at the base of the brain. This condition needs to be monitored very closely. So starting in early childhood, patients undergo magnetic resonance angiography at a minimum of once per year. The goal here is to prevent the rupture of aneurysms, and in these patients we do it the same way we would traditionally with clipping or coiling. These patients develop a veritable smorgasbord of osteodysplastic changes, which aside from coxavera are not apparent at birth. The other abnormalities are appreciated over a period of time and include things such as metaphyseal flaring in the distal radius and ulna with undergrowth and bowing, delayed ossification in the wrist and fusion of carpals, hypoplastic distal phalanges, triangular distal femoral epiphyses, knobby wrists and ulnar deviation, long, thin clavicles, hypoplastic or absent ribs, flat vertebrae in young children, and foreshortening of vertebral bodies in older children, and a hypoplastic femoral head. Dum -dum. Over time, their ligaments become lax, which decreases joint stability and increases the chance for subluxation, especially in their hips, feet, ankles, and fingers. Lateral dislocations of the knees, also not an uncommon thing. I know what you're thinking. You're like, eh, well, these kids ain't growing, so uh, how's about we give them a little growth hormone, eh? And exactly in that voice, because that's how everyone experiences their internal dialogue. Right? No? Just, just me? Well, anyway, that is exactly what another pretty smart group of people thought, and they were so 
wrong. It turns out that giving these kids growth hormone is pretty ineffective. Some of the kids did see a tiny growth spurt of a couple centimeters, but that tapered off over a year, even with the continued administration of growth hormone. Fortunately though, the only ostensible side effect of this treatment was the early appearance of cafe au lait spots. Speaking of spots, MOPD patients universally have these characteristic progressive dermatological changes. At birth, the skin is normal, but by the time they're two, that's when cafe au lait spots kind of start to appear. By the time they're this many, most kids start to develop increased pigmentation around their trunk and neck and axilla. Despite the possibility of having been malnourished as a baby, parents report that their kids display a good degree of hyperactivity in infancy and childhood and that they are easily distracted. Most have very sociable and outgoing personalities, although they do tend to be very comfortable with routine and when confronted with sudden change, they might show flares of anger. You're not gonna like them when they're angry. There are a few similar syndromes that need to be included in a differential diagnosis. For instance, Meyer-Gorlin syndrome has similar microcephaly and delayed bone age, but if your patient does not have absent patellae and bilateral microtia, you must take Meyer-Gorlin syndrome and see that you strike it off your differential diagnosis list. MOPD type one, unlike type two, shows very early radiographic evidence of bony abnormalities and presents with severe derangements of the central nervous system. Strike it off. Patients with type three have severe mental retardation, more or severe microcephaly and a hypoplastic pelvis. Strike it off. Uh, Steckel syndrome demonstrates similar or more severe intrauterine growth retardation, but these patients have severe microcephaly at birth and no bony dysplasias. Strike it off. Russell Silver syndrome patients have similar intrauterine growth retardation, but their heads are normal size for their chronological age, which makes them disproportionately large for their bodies. Strike it off. Other characteristics that are useful in ruling out MOPD are syndactyly of the toes, the presence of a submucous cleft palate, a severe retromicronathia, coxa valga, small palpable fissures, and cataracts. The only way to make a definitive diagnosis is through genetic testing. You can go to the Molecular Diagnostics Laboratory at the Alfred I. DuPont Hospital for Children in Wilmingham, Delaware, and if you give them two four milliliter tubes of blood and $2,200 in four short weeks, they will give you a complete sequence analysis of the coding region, as well as select X in addition to those reports, however, the Genetic Services Laboratory at the University of Chicago Go White Sox will provide carrier and prenatal testing, but it will cost you $450 extra dollars and take four to six weeks longer. Today, we know what. What MOPD is. What it looks like. But what is the easy question? Why? Wise men have dedicated their entire lives to answering questions of why. So why MOPD? Who knows?